like, damn, he's dissing people like how they do in Chicago. That's what I was thinking. So I'm like, damn, young boy's on demon time right now. And he's dropping the whole tape Friday. Now, he didn't drop the tape, right? Um, but people were, were not that pleased, okay? First of all, Lil Reese was like, yo, man, that ain't no goddamn demon time. He's just rapping like the rest of these rappers, okay? And if you don't know, Lil Reese is from Chicago. He's from Lamron. That's not Oblock, but, you know, the whole GBE and for the most part, was like O Block. So people from O Block kind of feel a certain type of way about it, right? Again, I'm just telling fans, let the rappers and the niggas who are in the streets pick a side, okay? The rappers with fake relationships and the street niggas. We're fans. You can listen to both of them. If you look at the, the songs I play, I play I play them back to back. Sorry. Anyway, we definitely gotta talk about this, man. Um I know nobody ain't going to say it. So it's definitely going to be me who got to say it. Now, well, first of all, let me just say, The weekend Dawn FM, it's, it's sold 154000 first week. Somebody has finally got to just openly say it. The weekend throwback album was mid compared to Tory's throwback album. Like, let's be real. When it came to executing a con conceptual album that was supposed to be a throwback, you know, an ode to a different era, I thought The Weeknd was going to knock it out the park. I'm looking at how they did the whole makeup thing with him. He had the gray hair, blah, blah. It made it look like, yo, that was his heyday. Like, he was old. He's old now, but that was when he was, you know what I mean? The guy. So I'm thinking the music going to be fire. Dawn FM is kind of like a little radio station theme, right? I'm thinking it's going to be fire. And the music just didn't hit like that. Didn't hit like that. Tory, on the other hand, this shit is fucking flames. <laughs> now, Tory ain't liked right now. Nobody like Tory. So nobody really going to admit it. But we got to give the nigga, like, we got to give him a break. Yo, like, listen, Tory dropped, like, a live performance of this shit. Yo, listen, I got to play this. I got to hear this shit. This is Tory performing his throwback. You know, it's a song from his throwback album. It's called The Color Violet. Listen to this. And this is where I think The Weeknd was missing. We're going to get back to talking about The Weeknd, but we have to talk about how Tory, you know, I think he owned the character. And by the way, I don't think Tory gets to this point. I don't think Tory gets to this point at all. If he isn't blackballed, being blackballed allowed Tory to get out of the psyche of thinking trap music, trap music, trap music, auto tune, trap music, auto tune, trap music, sound like Travis Scott, trap music, whatever, whatever, and just trying to just make the charts, make the charts, make the charts. You want to have a, you want to have a song up there that's you know bumping in Atlanta clubs. Like he realized you're probably not gonna make the charts because you're blackballed, and you know what he did? He fell back. And started taking artistic risks. Now I credited The Weeknd for doing that. Because I think The Weeknd. Even though he's a pop star. He's always strived to have an edge. You know. Like. Conceptual albums. Like even what Tyler the Creator does. I think those albums. Are dope when executed right. Because these days. Big artists. They don't want to take a risk. They want to give you the same shit that worked the last time. Why change? Listen, why, if it ain't broke, why fix it? That's usually the motto. Kanye West, Tyler, the creator, they have been some of the artists who every album sounds very different. They're going in different directions. They're trying things. Now, I know some of y'all might be saying, this is interesting to, uh, to hear coming from a nigga who likes Drake. You're right. I think some of the flack with Drake is that Drake doesn't do that. It doesn't look like he's taking too much artistic risks. It sounds like everything we've heard from Drake for the last 10 years, yeah, he might get a little bit more into the rapping bag at times or more into the swag rap or just like rapping over club beats at times or sometimes give us a little bit more R&B. But he's not taking the risks that we've seen the greats like Ye do. Like, think about Kanye who 
really dropped a trilogy classic when he came in the game. Came in the game with, what's the name of that song? Uh, or not not a song, but an album. College Dropout, Late Registration, Graduation. And after that, you said, eh, it's cool. I know y'all love soul samples and everything. But he saw music evolving himself. He saw music evolving. And he wanted to push the evolution. Also, it matched a time in his life. He was going through a breakup. 808s and heartbreaks. That's why, you know, I give him a lot of credit. I know I've always trashed Yeezus. Always trashed. That is a garbage album. Still think it is. You know, and, and, and you know, I, I've always, I reviewed it as, I think it was like four out of ten. There's like four good, there's four good tracks on it. There's there's like one that's tolerable or like two that's like eh, and, and, and the rest is like garbage. You know what I mean? So like half the album is fucking like, you can't even listen to it, right? I've always given him credit for being at least experimentative on the project. Now, I just couldn't give him an A because he tried to do something new. That's why I see a lot of people deal with Yeezus. Because he tried to be different, you give him an A for effort. No. I give you props as an artist for experimenting. But for the project and rating it, it's still trash. Okay? Now, I like when artists, you know, especially after a few albums, it, it shows you trying to grow. It shows you trying to grow. And I think with sales not mattering or him knowing he's not going to get too much sales, Tory freed himself of being in this rigid structure of, I have to create this music that sounds like this to be on the radio, to be in the clubs, to ba 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 just that he could remain on the charts. He freed himself for that, and he's taking chances. I think one could say maybe CLB didn't have enough chances. I thought Certified Lover Boy, especially when I started seeing the heart, like, I mean, I get it. He didn't go through a transformation like, like, you know, Tory, maybe Tory's trying to hide the ball spot, but he at least put on a jerry curl. You know what I mean? Try to get the aesthetic also kind of right. You know, the weekend he changed his whole, like, appearance. He looks old, right? Drake just fucking carved a heart in his, his head. But we, we know it's Drake. He ain't, he's not Tory or, or uh, The Weeknd. But we expected a little bit of, a little bit more. We thought he was going to delve into, like, this theme. And and I for me, I use that as a knock against CLB. And really, it's because of what I thought it was going to be. So it's not necessarily a full knock because that was my expectation that wasn't uh, met. Maybe that wasn't his um, original plan. But when we think about these thematic albums, The weekend, I'm not going to say it was a complete swing and miss, but it was a ground ball, if you're familiar with baseball. It's a ground ball. It's a ground ball to to to, to, to uh um to third base. That's it. And it's not that it's not that impressive, but it's not whack either. But it's nothing to talk about other than the fact that it's the weekend. What Tory did, and I'm gonna play this live live performance right here. I thought he brought some life, and he actually when watch listen to his music. You kind of start to think, damn, how was life back in that time when this this sound of music was popular? Listen to this. I left my heart speeding car going 90 in the rain. She took my heart filled it with nothing but pain. This speed in my ass, it's not for romance. I want to stay with playboys with Dance, dance, dance. Mm, mm, mm. So I will dance again. Damn. Oh, baby. I will dance again. Fire. I'll say this. I don't think no one does what Tori does. And I'm going to explain this whole thing with Tori. Better than Tori. I, I think Tori, Tori out of everybody does the best job of this. You remember when Tori just came in the game? People used to just kind of call him a copycat. 
right? They used to call him Ditto. You know what I mean? Like they used to say he's really good at imitating someone else's sound and pretty much making the best store bought version of it possible. Now, here's the thing that's arguable arguable um, about that. Sometimes he'll, I won't say mimic, but he'll draw inspiration and come close to either meeting it or do it in a weird way where, like, his spin of it is dope in its own way. For example, you know, you know, uh, like, I, I like how he recently hopped on um, uh, Capella Gray's Gallus song, and on that song, he literally calls himself the remix killer, which I think he is kind of the remix killer. I think, you know, no disrespect to Capella Gray, I think Tori's version of that song, right, sounds better than the original. For a lot, for, while, while Tori and Drake had their issues, some people might tell you that Tori's version of Controller sounded better than Controller. So what Tori's really been good at is being able to pinpoint and being able to use inspiration and flip it in his own way and sometimes even meet the level of the true thing he is, I won't say copying, but using as inspiration, right? By the way, we saw it when he did um, the remix album, right? Like, didn't he remix a bunch of, like, like um, love songs or whatever? He did one for the Pretty Ricky song. Like, his remix of that Pretty Ricky song actually gave that Pretty Ricky song, like, a whole new meaning and life when Tori does it. Right. And I think what Tori's doing with this album, I think he probably went back, listened to a bunch of people who have been great during that time in music and probably said, yo, I'm going to craft out a space where I could live in. And he fucking did it clearly, sonically. And he's delivering it right by all these performances. This doesn't look like it doesn't look too expensive. That's like a backdrop. That might be a green screen or something like that. Get a couple of couches, have the, the live instrumentation there. You know what I mean? Him throwing a jerry curl. But it gives, like, kind of the aesthetic, right? He's not doing it, like, on some $100 million budget. From what I hear, he's producing all these or, like, he's directing all these videos at his goddamn self, you know? Probably get some, a stylist to get some wardrobe from the whatever era it was. And he's rocking out. Now, The weekend who has, like, the unlimited amount of budget, he didn't nail the main thing, which is sonically making this sound infectious now like did he make it sound like it was from a different era yes was it infectious like damn i could listen to this shit continuously over and over again i don't know if he really nailed that so you know kudos to tory y'all don't want to say it but i'm just I, I, i'll just repeat it tory's album which is a throwback album was way better than the weekend's last album which was a throwback album, but nobody's going to talk about it because Tory's blackball. And these days, people who write about music or talk about music, they're not into really giving credit to the people who did it and did it well. They're used to playing within and coloring within the lines. So the obvious comparison to me is comparing it to Tory, but a lot of people won't do it because it would mean you'd have to give Tory some props. Fucked up, right? Anyway, um, by the way, the sales... I think the sales is a reflection of, of it not having the impact that the weekend normally has because the songs aren't resonating as much. If you think about it, like his sales, his predicted sales went down. It was supposed to do 170, ended up doing 154. So the sales went down while you look at other artists, like for example, Wanna, his sales went up over the week. So, you know, I always say that that could be attributed to uh, word of mouth and clearly, I don't, I don't see people talking about this Weekend album as they should. Now, this was a hilarious story. Man, it says Jay-Z and Team Rock, which, you know, Jay-Z's been doing some philanthropic things, so salute to him. And for all my little Jay-Z, the, the, the people who say I'm a Jay-Z hater, look, I'm giving Jay-Z some props. Um, yeah, so Jay-Z and he has a team. I don't know if this is the dream team. That uh um that also works with like Meek Mill and and um uh, the owner of the Sixers or whatever, but he has his own team that's trying to like do some philanthropic things and, and salutes him for that. Um, there was a or there is a guy right that is locked in.